Hello, welcome to Tax Watch, the weekly show of the concerned taxpayers of Duval County. Uh, we air typically in the evenings at 7 or 7.30, and we sure welcome your viewership. Uh, concerned Taxpayers is a nonprofit organization uh, meeting monthly uh, in uh, Duval County, and our website is jackstaxpayers.org. With us today is Conrad Markle, uh, mm -hmm. co-host and member of the Concerned Taxpayers. Uh, also, John Winkler, uh, our uh, distinguished member of the Concerned Taxpayers. I'm Dave Smith. And our special guest tonight is Carla Miller, City Ethics Officer. Welcome, Carla. Thank you, Dave. Mm -hmm. uh, it's great to have you here. Uh, would you like to start us off, please, with uh, something about your background and education? Well, I got my initial degree at Florida State University and with a double major in criminology and religion, so I always like to say it, <laughs> it taught me about the very best in human nature and the very worst. <laughs> Interesting. And then after I got my uh, degree there, I worked for a few years and I actually worked in the city of Jacksonville as a crime prevention specialist. And then I went back to law school at University of Florida. Very good. And. Um, uh, I know, I understand that you worked with the U.S. Attorney's Office at one time? Right. Uh, when I was in law school, uh, I did an internship at the State Attorney's Office, so I got to know all the people uh, at the state level. And then when I graduated, I was accepted as a federal prosecutor uh, in the U.S. Attorney's Office, which was quite interesting. Uh, in what way? Can you describe some of the cases that you handled that were interesting? Well, one of the uh, uh, situations that I got involved in, uh, in 1980 to 1982, uh, the FBI had a sting into Jacksonville city government. And so we had about 13 related cases, uh, grand jury investigations, and uh, my prosecution ended up being uh, against the president of the Florida Senate, a lobbyist uh, uh, in Tallahassee, and the chairman of the Democratic Party. Uh, so it was an interesting introduction to practicing law and trial work. You, you got started with some very challenging issues right off the bat, in other words. Yes. Very good. And um, how did you come to be the ethics officer in the city of Jacksonville? Uh, after I was a federal prosecutor, I started my own law firm. and. Uh, Mayor Delaney got elected and uh, I was interested in creating uh, a stronger ethics program for the city of Jacksonville since I had seen the flip side which was the corruption that was dealt with in the early 1980s uh, and of course in 1985, uh, 86 there were some more prosecutions uh, of people in the city including the general counsel of the city was prosecuted uh, by the uh, FBI and the uh, U.S. Attorney's Office and went to prison. So in the 80s we had a lot of things going on in Jacksonville City government. So I thought in the 90s uh, when Mayor Delaney got elected it would be a good time to go in and, and try to figure out at the front end how you could prevent some of that corruption from occurring. Uh, so I got involved in the Ethics Commission which is a volunteer citizen group as you all know. And uh, I uh, started working with General Counsel's Office on redrafting the city's ethics code, which was, I thought it'd be a two or three month project. It turned out to be a two year project. Uh, but we finally uh, uh, got that passed by city council in 1999. And it was the first comprehensive ethics code for the city of Jacksonville. And I was doing this as a volunteer and chairing the ethics commission. And so uh, really from 1996 to 2007, I volunteered. Uh, in various ethics initiatives and then in 2007 the mayor hired me to come in part-time as the city's ethics officer. Very nice. And uh, you're full-time now at this point or still part-time? Uh, the city has allocated funds for part-time. I wake up in the morning thinking about it and I go to bed <laughs> thinking about it. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, I carry the hotline with me at all times. Uh, I get calls at 10 o'clock at night, 6 o'clock in the morning. Uh, so uh, you know as far as what uh, the, the uh, position is officially part-time. Sure. But uh, as you say, it consumes your life pretty much on uh, a full-time basis. Um, we um, would also like to know um, 
How is the Ethics Office different from the Ethics Commission? You're a, you're a paid employee and the Ethics Commission is volunteers, you, mm -hmm, you've said mm -hmm. that. What are the other differences and how do you define their roles? Yeah, that's a good question because a lot of times when people hear the word ethics, they think, oh, everything is, is the same here, but a actually the Ethics Office that is my office is very different than the Ethics Commission and they're set up in our code differently and they list all the duties and for anybody that really wants to go uh, list by list as to what the duties are it's uh, posted on the ethics web page but the ethics officer position is uh, a position that has internal and external functions so what I would do would be internal like with all the training of all the city employees. I've trained several thousand city employees. I work with each one of the departments on setting up a risk analysis plan for what is the area where we could have some corruption or what, where is the risk mm -hmm. and what can we do to train and prevent that from happening. Sort of like troubleshooting. Exactly. The various departments. So that's the internal function mm -hmm. and then I'm the liaison to the Ethics Commission and the Ethics Commission is sort of like um, a board of directors. Uh, they meet once a month. They uh, are lawyers, uh, people, professors, people in the community, and they come in and they say, okay, you know, we're waiting here uh, to get information so that we can make recommendations to city council. If there's a complaint, they can handle a complaint that comes in from a citizen, but they're only meeting once a month. The Ethics Commission, this volunteer group, has zero budget, zero dedicated staff. Mm -hmm. So, and I used to chair that commission, so I'm pretty familiar with, mm -hmm. with uh, what they can accomplish. Yes. Um, very good. And um, what, um, what would you describe as the major functions of the ethics office? I know the hotline is an mm -hmm, important mm -hmm, factor mm -hmm. in that. And um, uh, when does a person know they should call the hotline to? Um, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a multiple question there, Carla. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the hotline, it's really important that people feel comfortable in calling the hotline really at any time where they have some confusion and they want an answer to something and they think that something isn't quite right. Sometimes people are under the impression that they have to kind of build the case and they have to get all the facts and mm -hmm. uh, y they have to present it on a silver platter. No. Mm -hmm. And in fact, when I train employees, I tell them, look, if something doesn't feel right, mm -hmm. let me know at the front end because maybe we can do something. And if they feel safe in coming to my office and talking with me, I think that's where the preventative end goes in. And I would say every day, every single day, I'm dealing with a city employee who has a question about, well, this is confusing to me. I don't know whether to do A or B, what are the ethical considerations? And the more I can get people coming to me at the front end asking that, I think we can prevent things from occurring. Very good. So you, your, part of your function is educational. Mm -hmm. You really have kind of a preventive uh, role in, in uh, preventing corruption by letting people know uh, what the rules are. Mm -hmm. You would probably you work with a city council member or an elected official as well as a, an appointed official? Mm -hmm. Very good. And um, I think that's an interesting point you're making that people have to feel comfortable mm -hmm. in calling the ethics office. Do you have to be a lawyer in order to call in? Um, obviously not, I, I guess you're saying. And then. Um, uh, you will go over with the individual the various details and try to figure out where to go from there. Is that correct? Right, right. And there's a, a wide array of things that come in. I mean, uh, when I uh, first came in, uh, the hotline was announced the day that my position was announced and the phone started ringing. <laughs> and so uh, I've taken over 300 phone calls, uh, maybe up to about 350 now, uh, open certain cases. Some have been referred directly to law enforcement. Uh, and so I see now the categories that people have questions in. And a lot of it, uh, just because we have 350 phone calls doesn't mean that they're all uh, sig significant uh, criminal cases or ethics violations. A lot of it is people are confused. Yeah. And they see something and it, it doesn't quite gel with their understanding of how it should be. So the explanation, the ed it, there's actually an education aspect of the hotline too, which is very significant. Very good. 
Um, gentlemen, any follow-up questions or any ideas to discuss? Um, well, let me ask you this. One of the